All of us living in China notice one thing. Most of our Chinese friends, especially during my first year, my first impression of them was, after class, it's the library. Or the canteen, back to the library. Back to class. I used to think, oh my god, don't they have another life? I know, all of you think that way. But the reality is they do. They are planning for a better life. So they want to use the time that they have today to make sure they have the time to enjoy themselves tomorrow. So it's called delayed gratification. You work hard today in order for you to enjoy yourself tomorrow. You persevere, you set a goal, and you wake up every morning, do the same thing once and again in order for you to reach that goal. One of the friends that I used to admire very much loved English. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but back in 2006, 2007, there was a very famous trend in China called Liang Fu Hong Yu, crazy English. What did they do? Six o'clock every morning, they would gather together, a bunch of students, and they would shout out of their hearts, screaming in English so that they can perfect their language. One of my friends, he used to study chemistry here, but he loved learning English. And what he did every single morning, without any exception, is be there at 6 a.m. in front of Building 16 with a bunch of his friends and scream from the bottom of his heart random English words, just so he learned to speak. Today, he is one of the most famous public speakers in China. I, at the time, offered to help, but I couldn't wake up every single day and go there, even in the rain, in the winter. But he persevered, and he got to where he wanted to. And sometimes, I remind my family of the same thing. You can't imagine how many times my family have said, enough studying, come back home. I'm sure all of you understand they, why they would be calling me home. <laughs> However, my stubbornness got me to where I am today. And I'm thankful to God that I was stubborn. Because today, I am happy. I set a goal for myself when I was 10 years old. And by God's grace, I got to where I wanted to. And this is something that's made my family proud, it's made everybody who knows me proud. And I'm happy that future generations will remember this. I hope that they will see me, they will remember my story, and also be inspired to persevere, choose a path, set a goal, and continue on that path until you've reached the end. Now the third thing I've learned throughout my stay here in China is that if you want anything to change, you have to be the person to change it. Don't just sit and expect for change to come. Now that is one of the reasons why, even though I'm working here, I chose to go back to my country and work with my government. A lot of you see, Africa, see Mogadishu, see Somalia, and they see it in chaos. A lot of the people I know, my friends, my family, thought it was too scary, too dangerous to go there. And it's true. While I was there, a few explosions happened, yes. But at the same time, I believe that unless each and every one of us keeps in their mind the fact that if we don't work for change in our own countries, no change will come. You may be comfortable where you are today. You may be, let's say you're living and working in China, or you're living and working in the US, or the UK, or anywhere. Fine. In the end of the day, it's not your home. Your home will always be where your parents come from. Your children's home is also, will always be that place. Now, what kind of place do you want your children to inherit? What kind of legacy 
Do you want your children to inherit? You have to work for it. And that begins with you developing yourself. If you don't have the skills, if you don't have the capabilities to contribute back home, then there's nothing for you to do. So start with yourself. Develop your own skills. Develop your own talents. Gain the academic knowledge you need. And then make sure that you use that to contribute to the legacy you want to leave for the future generations that come after you. And this is what I found in my teachers, in my friends, and in my colleagues here in China. They want to see a better country for themselves. That's why they work day in and day out. It's not easy. Nothing comes easy. But once you set the goal in your head, you will definitely, most definitely get there. I'd like to conclude with a very simple um, idiom that, I've, that most of us know. They say, no man is an island, and no country can be on its own. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, we all need each other. Whether I'm from Somalia, you're from Tanzania, Zambia, Mali, Nigeria, or even China. If you want to continue to survive, we all need each other. So make sure that you cultivate the friendships and you cherish the friendships you make while you're abroad. The people you meet, the friends that you make from different countries, these are the people who might one day be sitting with you in the chairs of the African Union if you work hard enough. Agree? Personally, I hope I can make it to one of those chairs. And I honestly hope that I can see one of these faces sitting there with me one day. And last but not least, one very important fact that all of us should know is that whether you like it or not, when you're abroad, you represent your family, your country, your continent, your religion, and your culture. You represent all of these, whether you like it or not. The way that you handle yourself, the way that you treat others, the way that you communicate with other people gives them an idea, an impression about your continent, your culture, your family, your religion, and your country. So make sure before you, I will give any examples, make sure that in every single day, everything you say, everything you do, you have that in mind. Thank you very much.